iPad OS 26 is finally here and this is the biggest update we have ever seen come to iPad. And besides the obvious change in look that we're seeing with that new liquid glass design, there's also a huge leap in functionality specifically for the iPad. The biggest of course being Windows on iPad that makes multitasking actually possible on an iPad and takes this once niche device to something that could really be a computer replacement for many people. And the best news is iPad OS 26 is not locked to pro models. So very likely the iPad that you have in your hands right now can support iPad OS 26 as long as you have enough storage, of course. And I figured since your iPad might look a little bit new to you, I've been playing with the beta version of the software for quite some time. I figured I would show you my very favorite features and how you can use them so you can get the most out of your iPad now that you have iPad OS 26. Let's start with what we're all here for, windowing. Windows on iPad have been completely redesigned to give you the flexible experience you might already be used to on Mac. When you first open an app, it will open in full screen like you're used to, but now you can simply grab the handle at the corner of your screen to resize that app and move it anywhere on the screen, including off to the side. And along with these new windows are familiar window controls in your top left corner. Tap on them to select and you can maximize your window, minimize your window, or close it all together. And to make this even more useful, they've added preset tiling options. So just go ahead and hold down on your window controls and those will pop right up and you can automatically adjust your windows into these perfect preset displays. This is how I use my iPad most often because I do feel like it looks best in these particular tiling options, but it's very open-ended. So if I wanted to add more windows or close windows, I could go ahead and do that right on top of these preset displays and my iPad will remember the size and placement of the window. So if I open that app again, it will open up in exactly the same way. And of course, I'm not stuck with any of these. I can just grab the corner and resize as much as I would like. And of course you can use this with a keyboard and make this like a really Mac-like experience. But since this is still a touch-based device, they've added a bunch of new gestures to make using these window controls feel almost like magic. They call them flick gestures and I figured I would show you how to use them real quick. To adjust the windows, just grab a corner and drag it into whatever size you want. To make it full screen again, just flick to the top edge. To instantly minimize your window, flick it down. You can also make anything into split screens by flicking it to one side or the other. If you wanna quickly see your home screen to add a new app, just swipe up once to move them all off to the side. And if you wanna minimize everything and start fresh, just swipe up two times. To see all of your windows open at a glance and find the one you need, you can use the new expose mode. Just swipe up from the bottom and hold, and now you can swipe to see the rest of your open apps and windows. You can also use three finger swipe on your trackpad to swipe through your apps. And to see all the functions of your apps at a glance, just go ahead and swipe down from the top and you're gonna see your brand new menu bar. Next up, of course, we have to discuss all the new customization you get with the new liquid glass look. Everything is already getting a refreshed glassy look, but you can take it further with customized icons. Hold down until everything wiggles and you'll see an edit button in the top left corner. Click on it and hit customize and you now have clear and tinted in addition to your default and dark mode and both the clear and tinted version, you can choose light or dark mode. Your lock screen now gives you a bunch of options to customize too. You can adjust the clock to any size, change colors, and choose the material of your clock, glass or solid. And you have the option to move your widgets to accommodate for a larger clock if you choose to. You can now turn any photo into a spatial photo as well that kind of looks like it pops right out at you just by clicking on this little button. And you could do this with anything that has any depth to it. You can also set these as your lock screens, which are really cool. It'll make your lock screen kind of look like it's popping out at you. Files got an overhaul too and you can now choose the color of your folder and you could also add a symbol or an emoji and they are not just cute they're functional tags as well so if you like to color code this is the option for you it's really easy to do just go ahead and open up your files tap on a folder hold down until you see that little menu pop up click on customize folder and tags and then you can click on tags and pick any color that you want underneath that you can also select a symbol or an emoji and now you have a perfectly customized folder that syncs across all of your devices you can also now add any of those folders to your dock just go ahead and hold down on it and drag it to your dock and it will go ahead and sit there and if you tap on it it will fan out all of the contents so it'll make it really easy for you to access all of your files genmoji got a cute little update too where you can mash your emojis together so say you want to take an emoji and then you want to give it an expression you can absolutely do that say if you want to change the color of an emoji you can do that if you want to mix two emojis together like say i want to take the owl emoji and i want to give it a graduation cap i can absolutely do that and you could do that right in messages go ahead and open your messages click on emoji and then click on that little smiley face that has that multicolored look to it and it will open up that like image playground option and you could go ahead and just select two different emojis and it will mash them together you can of course swipe through to find your perfect version of this and add any additional 
additional prompts you want to as well. Also in your messages, you can now add backgrounds to your chats. This is really cute. All you have to do is tap on the names up at the top and there's a new button called backgrounds. Click on that and there's a bunch of options to choose from. And you could also use Image Playground if you wanna generate your own. Apple also quietly launched two new free apps for iPad. Both of these apps are apps that we've seen on other versions of Apple products before. The journal app was on iOS and the preview app has been on Mac for a really long time, but the iPad versions are amazing and they're brand new. To be honest with you, I always like the journal app on your phone, but you now get basically all of that and more. It's I think better on the iPad. Not only is it laid out beautifully, but you can also of course use your pencil to make your journaling really unique to you. You can use your own handwriting, add as many photos as you want, and you can sync it actually across your iPad and your phone. So you still get the same prompts that you would get on your phone app without having to take your iPad everywhere. Something I really love about the journal app is you're actually able to segment out your journal and have different journals in your one. So say you want to split out a travel journal, you can absolutely do that. And you want to split that out with like maybe a gratitude journal or a daily journal. You can absolutely do that and you will have them separated on the left side. It's really, really nice. I love what they've done with this app and it's one I use kind of all the time. The new preview app is another thing that we didn't know that we needed, but you're probably quite familiar with it from on your Mac and on your iPad, it makes using your iPad even easier. It's a great place to mark up PDFs and images. You can actually also use it by itself to generate quick graphics on your own and you're able to export it to all different sorts of file types and sizes. It's just very, very useful and it being free is going to mean that for people who don't need to have an individual app just for this, it's going to save you some money. And you're actually able to generate things on its own just with the app as well. So you can go ahead and open it up and open a new file. You can make quick graphics this way and you're actually able to export these any images that you brought in or images that you've made natively in the app, you're able to export these to all sorts of different file types and sizes. And this is immensely useful. I actually do want to do a little bit of a deep dive on the new preview app because I do think this is one of the most under talked about features that I do think is going to make the iPad a lot more useful. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Let me know if you like this video, if there's anything else that you want to see from me, I could do a similar video to this to iOS 26 and show you all of my favorite functions on there as well. If there is anything that I could help you with, let me know. That's what I'm here for. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It helps out this little channel so much and I will catch you next time. Bye. The gentle April rain that stays